Did you notice in the pilot episode of The Amazing Digital Circus that there's another resident in the circus tent who appeared, but no one mentioned their name or talked about them even once? We discovered that among all the characters seated at the table at the end of the episode, who will be the main ones in the series? We can see, at a certain moment when Regatta, Pomni, and Jax are heading to Kofmo's room, there's a sign that isn't scratched, indicating it belongs to someone living in that room. From the image on the door, it seems to be some sort of wooden puppet, faceless, like a marionette. And when Pomni is searching for Kaney in the tent, she opens several doors, each revealing something weirder than the last. But in one of them, she finds the same character pictured on the door, in a bathtub, as if taking a bath. But right after that, he releases a face of despair, letting out a scream of pain. Well, everything suggests that it's the same character depicted on the door of the room, but he's also in the bathroom with a window that shows a blue sky. <laughs> Man, this is bizarre, but at the same time, it's very intriguing, and it seems that the amazing digital circus is delving deeper into this increasingly sinister vibe, which is what has made the animation a true phenomenon on the internet. This was just the first hidden secret rediscovered in the amazing digital circus. To find out what other secrets we've uncovered, stick around until the end of this video. And trust me, one of the secrets we've uncovered is chilling. The connection with the Bible. If you watched the pilot episode of the amazing digital circus, or saw our video discussing it, you probably noticed that the digital circus is, in practice, a kind of prison, even if it wasn't designed that way. Since we don't know who created that place or for what purpose. But the fact is, once you're trapped there, it seems impossible to escape. And the host and the person responsible for receiving the newcomers, so to speak, condemned to stay there, has a rather exotic name, Cain. What's interesting is that we've discovered some references to a biblical story that involves a character named Cain, who killed his brother out of envy. His brother's name was Abel. And when Pomni thinks she's finally found a way out, out, we can see the logo of a company on the wall above. It's called CNA. We notice that the logo features two letters prominently, C and A. These two letters are exactly the initials of Cain and Abel, the two brothers from the biblical story that led to the first murder in history. Man, this is bizarre because it might indicate that this animation is heading towards something much darker than we can imagine. And yes, there are more secrets we've uncovered that make this even clearer. But first, we need to talk about the eliminated characters. The amazing digital circus is still a big mystery when it comes to its purpose and reason for existence. But one thing is certain, there are always games created by Kane within it. And as you know, in a game for there to be a winner, there must be a loser. In the case of the game we saw where the characters had to capture the Gloinks, the queen of the Gloinks lost, getting completely torn apart by Kofmo in his crazy and demented version. But over all this time that the people are there, what happened in the other games? Who lost and what happened to them? We can't say for sure, but the fact that there are many faces with X in the hallway of the room suggests that perhaps, most likely, some of the circus characters were literally eliminated from the tent, maybe after losing several games or just one. It's impossible to say, but the fact is that throughout the episode, we could see nine faces with the X over them on signs along the hallway of the rooms. That will become ten now that Kofma won't sleep there anymore, but in the base Yes, 10 is a lot. Many people thought that these faces with the X on them were just characters who went crazy. But we're sure that's not the case for all of them, as when Kane opens the basement, we can see many beings down there similar to the crazed Kofmo, but there weren't as many. This suggests that other eliminated ones had a different fate, which might have been even worse, to the point of driving the characters crazy and desperate to find a way out, as happened with Kofmo. Chilling. The Brothers. Since we talked about the faces we saw in the doors of the rooms with the X, one of them stands out. It's a character identical to Kingo, but with different colors, wearing a red cloak and with a chess piece head in a darker shade. Since he has an X, it means he was removed from the company of the tent in some way we still don't know. He might have gone crazy, or he might have simply died in some game, just like Zubel would have been digested and turned into Gloinks by the Gloink Queen. What makes the mystery even more intriguing is that everyone claims Kingo has been in the tent the longest, to the point of constantly teetering on the brink of madness. But some strange theories have emerged about this character who is no longer in the tent. One theory claims that he and Kingo were the first to be taken to the digital circus, and at some point he went mad or died inside. Another theory states that Kingo didn't always have that appearance, but it actually belonged to this other character, and when Kingo won a game created by Kane and this other character lost, he ended up winning this new appearance as a prize. But beyond these two theories, there's another much darker and sinister one which suggests that the two, Kingo and this other character, were actually real-life twin brothers and were both transported to the digital circus, and at some point they repeated the same story of Kane and Abel. 
In other words, for some reason we don't yet know, Kingo ended up killing his brother, and that's why he's no longer there, and guilt and remorse made him become the being who constantly talks nonsense. This leads to another, even darker secret. Why were those people sent to the digital circus? One thing we can definitely say is that being inside the amazing digital circus is not a prize or something everyone would desire. On the contrary, being there seems more like a punishment. But wait, what if it really is? What if all those characters are really there as a way to pay for their sins or perhaps even crimes? This would certainly make much more sense, especially when considering that all of them have some form of mental disturbance to some extent. Jax, for example, is completely insensitive and lacks any trace of empathy, being considered a possible psychopath. Zubel doesn't care about anyone and blames people who aren't even present. Gangle has a split personality as indicated by her two masks. Regatta, despite being friendly, has narcissistic and egocentric traits to some degree. Kingo is eccentric and disturbed. And Pomni, despite having some awareness, left everyone behind without thinking twice when she saw a door labeled exit, when she could have called everyone and proposed that they all leave together. Do you see why it might be a place where these people were sent to pay for something in some way? Yes, not only is it quite possible, but it's highly likely. And that's what we hope to fully discover in the upcoming episode. Episodes. But if they committed bad acts that led them there, would it be possible to say that they are murderers? This is a possibility that's not ruled out. On the contrary, it might even be quite probable. If the circus was a form of torture or digital prison where people who committed a very specific type of offense are sent, some things could make a lot of sense. For example, having their memories wiped out so they wouldn't remember why they're there, because if they knew, they might come to terms with paying for something they deserve. But then the question arises, what kind of crime would someone commit to deserve being in that place? We can't say for sure, but perhaps the place is reserved for people who committed homicides. Not just any type, but the most cruel and vile of all, killing their own brother or sister. This would explain the presence of the Cain and Abel mark in the place. And honestly, when you stop to think about it, it makes total sense. The name Pomni. Our last secret is related to the name of the girl who seems to be our main character, the unknown girl. Because nobody really knows her name. I mean, nobody knows anyone's name there, as none of them remember anything before ending up there, and they all call each other by the nicknames Cain gave to each of them. And the name Pomni has a rather enigmatic meaning. After doing some research and not finding any apparent meaning for this name, someone on the internet located a word in a very complex language, the word Pomni, which comes from the Cyrillic alphabet used in countries like Russia, Serbia, Bulgaria, and Ukraine. Translating it into our language, it simply means remember, which is what the character wants most, besides escaping from that place that seems to be driving her almost insane already. This shows that, by all indications, Pomni's journey in the amazing digital circus will revolve around her discovering her past and how she ended up where she is now. And perhaps it's even better for her not to remember anything else for her own good. These are the seven hidden secrets in the amazing digital circus that we've uncovered to share with you today. If you enjoyed this video, you'll definitely enjoy these two suggestions we've picked out for you to keep having fun. I heard the video on the right is really cool.